Lee Thompson. Tell us about this Scar Orchestra, and it's one of many <coughs> projects you've done along with and since Madness. So how did this one come about? This one came about originally by a, a trumpet player, Joe Auckland. Uh, I kept on talking to him about wanting to start, go back to the music that we originally done, really rootsy, uh, and the M word, uh, the Madness band I was with, uh, full time, really didn't fill that uh, space. So on his suggestion, I got together a load of uh, chums, uh, 11, 12, sometimes 13 of us, at the moment it's down to 11, and uh, went back to our bare roots of ska music, a Jamaican, early Jamaican sound from the uh, mid 60s, early 60s. The story behind this, to tell the story that um, Unlike baggy trousers, in baggy trousers, when I put the harness on, you've got, I mean, the harness, when this was done, it was like made of, I don't know, leather and lumps of metal and uh, foam. And um, this one was quite comfortable, as you, as you can see, I've sort of got a bit of a smile on my face. But uh, in baggy trousers, when they put the, the, the uh, harness on, um, I caught uh, part of my scroty in the uh, mechanism, and when I got... After, like, you're up there for about an hour, I had a tear in every eye. <laughs> All three of them. And when I got down, we took it off, and uh, I think that, that evening, my um, scrotum turned black and blue. So I said, take away the bruising, but leave the swelling. <laughs> <laughs> that was the original image, wasn't it? And then um, I think within 12, 14 months, the glam rock came round, and it was uh, all a uh, checkered, checkered future. Checkered suits and big sideburns, and one phenomenal voice. I mean, that is, uh, yeah, they, part of my youth. Are you the this, meat on the shoulders? That's me with hair. Yeah. yeah. Things have changed a lot since then, as you see. Got a wide centre part coming on. 31 years ago this month. Oh, yeah. Must have been round about that. That was, uh, yeah, an outtake from what, whilst we was doing, uh, in this chemist here, we was doing the dancing for uh, House of Fun. And, uh, we had a bit of a tea break, well, supposedly, and Claire Muller, who never missed a, missed a chance to take a photograph, said, look, stand there, on each other's shoulders, if you like. And he had a bunch of kids come round. We were having a, having a fun time, fantastic weather, took the shots, got back into my ladies' kit, and uh, back in there to, to finish off the video. This, uh, this was our only, our only number one single, yeah. Well, this is, as you can see, is Mr. Ian Dury back in 1978. Um, and, uh, back in the late 90s, 1990 to be precise, so I went over to see Mr. Mike Barson and write a few tunes. And we was on his barge, he lived on a houseboat. And uh, we got together a tune, he came up with his tune, I came up with the lyrics. And as boats went by, the, but the houseboat would rock. So it was like, gave a giggling effect. We were giggling as we was writing it, fantastic. Not only that, as I've got on my little set up and bed to drive through the Vonville Park, back to my hotel, in the, uh, in the, down in the, uh, the room there, Mr. Ian Dewey had all these umbrella pods around him, and he was being interviewed for various uh, magazines. And I've got, like I am now, I sort of got up on a chair to get over the top, and he's looked up and he's gone, <gasps> what are you doing here? I said, I've come to stalk you. I was like, joking. So he said, I'll do this, I'll see you downstairs in 10 minutes. Went downstairs with the lyrics, I said, I've got this song. I said, it's Keystone Cops meets, it'll be right up your strata. I mean, him being a big, you know, a massive influence on my lyr lyric -ness. Uh We met, we had a little bit of fish, uh, fish dish, and I told him the, the, the story of the song. He said, I love the sound of it. He said, let's meet up back in England, back at Amsterdam. He said, what's it called? I said, Drip Fed Fred. He said, you take the piss. It's unfortunate he, was, he had a, this revolutionary drug where he had to carry a bottle about with him. And I was like, oh my good God. But he came round, he, he'd done the song, recorded, da da da. We went to West Side, Sto uh, West Side Story, West Side Studios, Clive and Owen Studio, our producers. And he was in and out within half an hour. He just put his vocals down in two, possibly three takes, and he was away. He was that quick. The rest of the band was still in bed by the time he finished. So when they arrived, they're like, right, where is he when we start? I said, he's gone, he's out of here. He's up in Newcastle doing more press. And, you know, uh, a massive influence. Ian? Right.
the, the, the bar over there. And the As you can see, we have Flash Hyde Never. What's his name? To uh, park the bar. Oh, yeah. This is quite nice. I mean, you know, I'm, I'm not sort of getting all poncy on your ears, but this is a bit better than the, uh, the Dublin Castle's dressing room. Which is about as the size of the toilet we're about to go into. This, well, this will hold 11 of us anyway. Possibly 12, 13. Oh, I could live it. I really could. Shake this in. What's going on? Look at this. This is fantastic. Your shower. You've got your oils, your moisturisers. You've got a tube. I, I, I've never seen a shower like that before. Look at that. This is. Um, I'm staying. It's gorgeous. So look, soft triple ply toilet paper. I can't even keep that. <laughs>